Okay, so before we move on to the next exercise, I just thought I'd offer you a couple of challenges that you might like to try um, to do with complex numbers. So one of them looks like this, which I will tackle in just a second, but you might like to have a go now. And then the second one is just to complete this table where you're told that Z, the complex number, has a modulus R and an argument of theta, and you need to try and work it out for all of these other ones that you've got here. Just a quick reminder, Z star means the complex conjugate of Z, but I'm gonna go through both of these questions now. So this first one, it's not going to be very pleasant, but we're going to try and apply all of the rules that we've got. Now, the difference that we've got here is we've got something to the power of five and something to the power of three. So really what we're doing in this first one is we're multiplying this complex number by itself five times. So think what should happen to theta. Now, normally when we multiply two complex numbers, we add the arguments, we add the thetas. So if we're going to be multiplying it by itself five times, we're going to take this 9 pi over 7 and we're going to add it to itself five times because it's being multiplied by itself five times. So rather than thinking about it as an addition of five times, we should be able to see that this just simplifies to multiplying it by five because we've got five lots of it. And we're going to be able to do a similar thing for the bottom in just a second. So let's actually just see if we can simplify what that first line should be. That first line would therefore simplify to the cos of 5 multiplied by 9 pi over 7. So that's 45 pi over 7 plus i sine 45 pi over 7. And I'm hoping what you've spotted is that there's a negative down here. So the way that we can deal with that, as you know from the previous video, is we can change it to a positive and then negate the arguments that we've got here. So we'd have the cos of minus 2 pi over 17, some really unpleasant numbers here, plus the i sine 2 pi of minus 17, and that's all to the power of 3. Now we can do the same thing because it's to the power of 3, we can multiply these angles these arguments to the power uh, to by three as well. So I'm going to rewrite this, keep the same line there, and then the denominator is going to change and it's going to multiply by three. So it's just going to be minus six pi over 17 and minus six pi over 17. Now be careful here because we have now got two complex numbers. They've both got a um, they've both got a, a modulus of one. You can see at the beginning they had a modulus of one, so I haven't really worried about that. I've just been thinking about the argument. And when you're dividing complex numbers, you subtract the arguments. So just somewhere on my page, I'm actually going to be doing 45 pi over 7 minus a negative one, 6 pi over 17. So obviously we know these two minuses are going to become a plus. So let's just do this on here. We're going to do 45 over 7 plus, and this is not going to be nice, I don't think, 6 over 17, and we have 807 over 119. How unpleasant. So we've got 807 over 119 pi plus i sine 807 over 119 pi. Now, not very pleasant at all, but we just should remember that our values for theta are usually between pi and minus pi. So 807 over 119 is 6, um, 6.78, so it's well above the 1 pi. We've actually got it at 6.78 pi. Now, if you think about an argon diagram, a location of a particular complex number, if you want to go back to that complex number again, you can either subtract 360 degrees or add 360 degrees. But because we're in radians, you can subtract or add 2 pi, and it will still be the same complex number. Now, because my calculation that I've got here doesn't actually include pi, I'm not going to subtract 2 pi, I'm just going to subtract 2. And obviously, it's still too big, so I'll subtract 2 um, again. Still too big. And I'll subtract 2 again. And then we're at the right kind of size here. We've now got, um, as a fraction, it's 93 over 119. So we've got the argument in its correct range. So we're going to have the cos of 93 over 119 pi plus i sine of 93 over 119 pi. So we've taken something that already looks pretty abstract and we've been able to simplify it. Um, I don't know how useful this particular skill is, but we're going to delve into this a lot more deeply in year two complex numbers.
Okay, let's have a look at this one we've got here. It says to complete the following table. So we've been told that we've got a complex number with modulus r and argument theta. So this is all going to be in terms of r and theta. And actually, I think this is where the geometric properties are going to be really, really useful. So we have our axes. We've got the imaginary and the real axes. We've got some complex number here, which I'm going to call z. And we know that the length of the line is r and the argument is theta. So we're going to now talk about the next one, which is this z conjugate. We know that z conjugates, let's say that this one was uh, x plus i y, the conjugate is x minus i y. So actually what it does for the conjugate is it will just be going down. It will have the negative coordinate because of this negative y that we've got here. So it should have the same length, but the argument should be minus theta. So we can fill this in with r and minus theta. So z squared that we've got here, well, if the argument of z squared, z squared is z multiplied by z, the arguments, uh, sorry, the modulus are going to multiply. So the modulus will be r squared. And the arguments, they'll be theta for this one and theta for this one. So the arguments are going to add and theta plus theta is two theta. Here's where it gets a bit more interesting. We've now got z multiplied by z conjugate. Well, the modulus of both of these things is r, so we should have r squared. But the argument of z is theta, and the argument of z conjugate is minus theta. So when you add theta and minus theta together, you get zero. So actually, this tells us something about this complex number. This tells us something about this complex number z, z conjugate. What do you think it is that we know about z, z conjugate? Well, the thing we know about z, z conjugate, therefore, is it's actually not really a complex number anymore. It is a real number. It's a real number because the argument is zero, meaning it lies somewhere along the real axis. And it lies at the length of r squared. Last one that we've got here, this time we have z over z conjugate. So the modulus we're going to be careful about here because we're just going to literally be dividing the moduli. So it will be r divided by r, which is just going to be 1. But we have theta for the argument of the top, theta negative theta for the argument of the bottom. And when you divide, you subtract these. So it's going to be theta minus minus theta. And theta minus minus theta is theta plus theta which is just 2 theta. So hopefully you came up with some of these things that we've got here. Rarely, but off, um, rarely, but before, they have asked questions that are to do with like Z conjugate in these kinds of contexts. So it's just worth thinking about um, the geometry of it and how we can link this in to the exercise that we've just done. Okay, we'll be moving on to loci in the next video.